so for the next uh, two hours or so, we're going to go over corrosion of concrete and then also the use of external post tensioning to repair uh, those structures. Now, obviously, uh, external post tensioning can be used for um, areas outside of just corrosion, uh, but that, you know, at least my neck of the woods or my experience, the corrosion is usually um, what generates this type of retrofit. Uh, now, having said this, um, obviously, I think we're all fresh, still fresh in our minds what happened in Florida with the uh, concrete building coming down, the horrific images of that. Uh, just to be clear, which I'm sure it already is, but uh, I'm in no way insinuating that somehow uh, I would have fixed it or I could have known better or EPT would have been used and everything would have been fine. Uh, you know, corrosion has been a known quantity for a number of years, and unfortunately with that um, you know, that horrific accident happening. Hopefully it will uh, spur owners, architects, contractors, and ourselves to uh, better handle corrosion and, you know, hopefully never have that situation happen again. So having said that, let's first start going here with the talk. Uh, if you are interested in external post tensioning, anything I am talking about um, in this type of uh, seminar, webinar, uh, we have a book that we produced a number of times, or a couple, a couple years ago, and there actually is a chapter specific to external post-tensioning, uh, which is chapter 16. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, I don't really keep up on PT books uh, as much as I used to. I think we're the only one that actually has a chapter on how to design and implement external post-tensioning. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, I think that's the only type of reference, at least in a textbook type setting. Uh, that is available to you. You can get that uh, from a number of sources, including the SK Ghost website. So before we get into the specifics, the photograph here is the general concept of the external post tensioning. So what you're looking at is obviously an existing concrete slab. And then what we do is take the, the same post tensioning strands that will most likely in that existing concrete and then put them externally such that we are resupporting the deck. We have king posts, which you can see in the middle of the photograph at several locations. And that's going to give us the elevation jump that is going to create the quote unquote balance loads that push up on the structure. Obviously, it creates a truss like mechanism that increases ultimate strength and load carrying capacity. But obviously, it's external, it is all visible, and that can. Um, you know, be interesting to a certain extent, cause some issues to uh, some potential issues for architects or for MEP and stuff like that. Headroom obviously is a critical issue. But as I go through the system, one of the main benefits of EPT is that effectively it's weightless uh, in the total global weight of the structure. Adding, you know, a few strands here and there will never generate uh, the requirement for a seismic upgrade. So a lot of times when we do EPT, these structures are uh, older, obviously. They no longer conform to the, you know, uh, letter of the law in terms of the code or maybe even sometimes the intent. And if you start adding weight to an existing building, there is, I think, a 5% rule that kicks in immediately, a seismic upgrade, uh, which, you know, isn't a bad idea to do. But if you're not increasing the weight but increasing the strength, they don't make you do that as well. So that is a direct benefit of using EBT instead of, let's say, putting in concrete beams or steel beams and connecting those to increase the strength. So as I mentioned before, they are very effective in strengthening and repair of existing structures, which I'll cover in more detail as we go on. Uh, we have used them in concrete, steel, and wood structures. Uh, I have pictures of all three. Predominantly, it's used for concrete at least just in my experience using concrete. I have done it in wood, and I'll show you a picture of that. Um, it's done to a couple lesser degrees than what I'm going to show you. Sometimes people will put either a single strand or maybe like a um, tie rod or something that you can torque uh, the, over the head of the garage or something to you know lift up the, the um, beam over the garage entry, something like that, to a lesser extent. But that is effectively uh, external post tensioning in its essence. As I mentioned before, it adds strength without adding weight, and that is a very critical issue because obviously adding weight kicks in seismic. Obviously, there's issues with columns and foundations and stuff like that. So obviously, if you can do something to add strength, redundancy, issues like that without adding weight, typically those adds costs, you know, that usually is a benefit. 
As I mentioned before, a minor increase in weight can require a seismic evaluation or upgrade. And a lot of times, in our experience, these uh, external PT retrofits are voluntary. They are not are yet have not been mandated by the local building department. And so the owner is trying to do the right thing, you know, obviously save their investment, don't want to tear down the structure, but at the same time, they have to be realistic and not uh, massively increase the cost of the retrofit. So if you can you know, satisfy the letter of the law of the code without increasing the mass, then obviously you can hopefully get out of uh, the requirement of a seismic upgrade and or evaluation. Now, if it needs it, that's something completely different. But if it's you know generally a solid seismic system, 